Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is most frequently asked questions addressed by Dluba's support team. My name is Andreas Hörold. I am responsible for marketing and public relations in the Dluba software company. I'm working here for 12 years. Yeah, I'm responsible for the website, for example, the German and English webinars, customer projects, etc. I will be the moderator and presenter today. Uh, my two colleagues will support me and they can introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Karin Lessmann. I work here at Luba Software in the marketing department. Uh, so I'm also responsible for the webinars and newsletter, and I'll be answering your questions today. Hello, my name is Markus Baumgärtel. I'm responsible for customer support and frequently asked questions on our website. And today I will help my colleagues to answer your questions during this webinar. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. Some words to your questions. You can ask questions via the control panel on the right side of your screen. You can enter a question here and my two colleagues will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar because there are too many, you will get an email afterwards. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and email your questions to info at global.com. Okay, then we turn to the program, RFM6, and the first question is, how can I apply moving loads to members or surfaces in RFM6? In RFM5, we provided the RF move add-on module, but there's still no corresponding add-on for RFM6. Yeah, you can use a workaround. We programmed a script and we provide it on our website. Let's go to our website, global.com and under news and events, you find the webinars and this is today's webinar. We uploaded three script files here, one for generating moving loads on sets of lines, then one for loads on members and one for loads on sets of members. I use the first two files and after I download them, I can uh, yeah, copy them in that folder here. That's quite important. The C drive, there is uh, RFM6 installed on my computer, then user, that's my name, App data, local, blue bar, RFM6, 6.02, six um, that's the version, and user scripts. And those are the yeah, four files in that case, uh, the Java script file for the line set load and the XML file. Yeah, and those files must be copied in that folder. And then you can use them when you can find them under in the script manager here under user scripts. Before we start, we have to create a line set. Yeah, those are single lines and we have to connect them with uh, well, creating um, a line set. So with the control key, I can select all the lines. Then by right click, I can use the function create line set. And line set number one is created. Okay, and I can run the script, the first script. I have to enter here the load, the nodal load, yeah, 1000 Newton, one kilo Newton, yeah, that's quite okay for our trial, then 10 steps and line set number one. So those load cases are created. We can find them also here and I can click through the single 
load cases and the load is running over the line set. Let's repeat it for this member here. The member no number is one. Then I run the script. This time two kilonewton, 10 steps again, member number one, run. Okay. And the two kilonewton are running or moving over the member. Okay, yeah, just download the scripts from the website and you can try it by yourselves. In the next days, we will also uh, upload the model files on our website and you can try it also uh, with these models. Okay, also the whole webinar uh, we'll, uh, we will record this webinar and you will find the recording on our website, on the same website that I showed in the next days. Okay, to the next model and the next question. Question is, when using several scissor hinges, I cannot perform any calculation. However, I cannot find any reason for it. I use the transparent model. It, it explains it a bit, little bit better. Yeah, a, a scissor hinge can be used to model the crossing of continuous member. Now, yeah, for example, here, four members are connected in uh, to one node, and the members, these members here, transfer moments in their continuous direction, but not to the main member pair here. Yeah, and only actual and shear forces are transferred in this node. Okay, let's turn back to the wireframe model. So there are the first hinge. I double click on the member and add you know, uh, hinges are checked. And that's why we can uh, see this dialog here and we can edit the hinge. So the scissor hinge can be only used in the global and you know, also a rotated coordinate system. system. Yeah, and we uh, check here phi x and phi z. That means that the moments in around X and global Z are not transferred to the main member. Okay, and scissor hinge is also checked here. Then let's take a look at the end of this member. Yeah, uh, scissor hinge at the end and with the same conditions. Okay, let's calculate all. Yeah, and we get this uh, warning message. That's a numerical problem. We have to use exactly the same member hinge for the scissor hinges on both sides. That means I have to use on the right side also the hinge number one. Okay, now I have the same hinge on both sides. Okay, now we get the right result. You can see in the uh, you can see the supporting moment here from the secondary beams. No torsional moment on the main beam, yeah, and that's the correct results. Yeah, the solution was uh, the same hinge or scissor hinge on both sides. Okay, then. We turn to the next model and the next uh, question. How I um, how can I create a contact between two surfaces 
as quickly as possible. Yeah, you can see these two concrete slabs. It looks like they, uh, this one lies on the other, but I show the thickness in the model. If I change to the wireframe model, you can see there's no connection between the two surfaces. But it's quite easy to connect them with a special object here on the left side in the navigator data, surface contact. And with right click, I can select new surface contact. So you can select a group of surfaces for both sides. You, yeah, they, it's not necessary that the surfaces have has got the same dimensions or number of lines. Uh, it doesn't matter in RFM6. I select the two surfaces. And I have to create a new surface contact type. There are different options for the contact uh, perpendicular to surfaces, full force transmission, failure under compression or failure under tension. And for the contact parallel to surfaces, the full force transmission, friction, etc. I use the rigid friction in that case. And yeah, we can enter a friction coefficient here, for example, between um, concrete or yeah, be between two concrete surfaces. Or if you want to consider yeah, that the slabs or the surfaces can slide, you can enter a very, very small friction coefficient here. Okay. Then let's calculate all. Okay, and now we can see the surfaces are connected and we have got you know, the same deformation on that point here. That means yeah, the upper surface lies on the uh, surface at the bottom. Okay, then we come to the, or we turn to the next question. Is it possible to generate models like an RFM5? Yeah, an RFM5, we has had got a lot of yeah, model generators. We have, um, yeah, we have different ways to do that in RFM6, for example, with the scripts. There are different examples here for how and so on. And you can yeah, use the scripts here for loading and loads uh, for lines, solids, etc. And you can program your own script. If you don't have any knowledge in programming, you can use the Dlubal blocks. You can find the Dlubal blocks here at the, on the left side above, Dlubal center blocks. I can move them from my other screen. Where are beams, columns, arc beams, trusses, 2D, 3D frames, multi-bay uh, frames, tapered frames, halls, uh, yeah, you know, a, a typical hall frame, then a complete hall, 3D, yeah, or for timber structures, yeah, horizontal beams of roofs, and so on. Let's try it with a 2D truss, uh, maybe the first one. Or oh, I repeat it. Yeah, okay, I, I open a new file. Okay, I call it one. 
that we don't override this model here. So, okay, then let's open the blocks again. Then trusses 2D. Yeah, and there are different parameters. For example, for the structure, you can select different uh, cross sections, yeah, different materials. Uh, for example, I have to select steel here. Then I can change the dimensions here. All is possible. Okay, and if I apply here, the model is created and you can add nodal supports or loads and yeah, design this truss. Okay, then we turn to the next question and the next model. This model. Question is, is it possible to import support reactions as loads in another RFM model? Yeah, that's not possible at the moment. We are working on it, but if yeah, until it's finished, you have to use another way. I would like to show that. So that's the tower, wind load case, and let's take a look at the support reactions. And we would like this support reactions to uh, floor plate. And I open the model. Yeah. And on this lines, we would like to create loads with the support reactions from the tower. So let's turn back to the tower. We go to the table. Then static analysis, uh, results by line, the wind load case. And we would like to transfer these loads here, P set. So we have to export the data in a Excel sheet and the line number seven and 36 are interested for us. So that's line number seven and line number 36. Now, we would like to create only this two line loads on the foundation plate here. So, then I have to do that on one screen. If you have got two screens, it's quite easier, but yeah, I can only do that on one screen that you see all. So then line load, not uniform, but varying. So in set direction, and we have to fill out the table here by copy and paste. So number seven, the X values, control C, control V, and the values in set direction, control C, control V. Okay, the first line load is created, let's do it again for the, this line here. So line load varying. So, and we have to copy and paste the X values and the loads in, uh, load in set direction.
So I think it's, it takes not too much time. Uh, it's quite okay. It's only a workaround. We will implement the load transfer, but uh, it will take still some time. Okay, then we turn to the next model and the next question. Question is, how can I print the internal forces and moments sorted by cross sections and clearly arranged in the printout report? Let's take a look in the design situation number one and the internal forces. And the normal forces, shear forces, MY forces, etc. Let's take a look at the table, the static analysis, results by member, design situation one, and internal forces by section. So, and if I scroll down, uh, you can see it's a very, very long table. Yeah, and I would like to shorten it. So I can do that with that button here, show results, result table manager. Here on the left side, the internal forces by section, and I can deselect something and we can take a look at the table. Yeah, it's a very short table now, only the maximum internal forces for every cross section. Okay. Uh, I think that's not enough. We have to use another selection here. And we can check it. Uh, and I think that's quite okay. The maximum for the normal forces and Y forces, etc. And that for every cross section. I go back to the table here. Yeah, maybe one hint. If yeah, you want to print out the uh, member starts and member ends values, you have to select that here. Maybe for the design of connections. If you don't do that, for example, in our program, but in another program, I would like I would select these two checks here. Okay, I would like to print only that table here on the printout report. You know, both on the left side, I create a new printout report. I deselect all and select only the members internal forces by section. And if I check this here, and I also select this, then it takes over the settings that I did in the table in RFM. Okay, I selected design situation number one. Oh, and then I can save and show. The table here in the printout report. Yeah, as you can see, two pages yeah, and if you like you can yeah select other uh, or do another selection yeah but you know the workflow now okay then i turn back to the program and we come to the next question is it possible to enlarge the display size of design formulas in the printout report I go to the steel design. I designed only one yeah, member here, that column here. It's only an example. And if I would like to show the design checks, I can uh, yeah, double click here or use that button, design check details. And it's a new feature in RFM6. You can see here the formulas and yeah, the equations from the standard and so on. And you can print that in the printout report. 
can open the printout report or it's already opened. So, and those are the formulas. Uh, actually, it's not, it's not wished to change the size here. I think yeah, it's large enough, but yeah, we got the question, uh, can we enlarge the size? Yeah, well, this is a trick. By right click, you can press here, edit, and go to the source code. And if you scroll down, and before that text block here, you can find that line here, print font size, and you can change the font size. I change, change it to 12, okay? And the font size is enlarged now. Okay, then we turn to the next and the last model and the last question. Is it possible to analyze stresses of wells between surfaces using RFM6? Yes, that's possible. I already created line well joints uh, on the flanges here. Let's do that for the web together. On the left side here in the navigator data, you find the types for lines and the line welded joints. I create a new line welded joint. So then we find the joint types, the butt joint, the corner joint. On the right side, you can see the graphics, the lap joint and the T joint. Then single bevel, double bevel, single J, double J, single filled, and double filled. That's what we use. Yeah, the weld size, okay, four millimeter, and we have to assign the line and the surfaces. So this line between those two surfaces. Okay, and now you can see the pointed line here. That's the line welded joint number two. Let's calculate all. Uh, yeah, I have to calculate the, or I have to do the stress strain analysis. Um, that's the add on that is necessary for the design of line welded joints. Okay, I calculate all. So then we go into table stresses in line welds and you can see the stresses in the line welds on the left side and the navigator results. You can click through the single stresses, the sigma w, tau w, yeah, tau parallel, etc. Okay, yeah, and additional hint, we present a webinar in one week, the same time on Thursday, and it contains only the add-on stress strain analysis and also the line welded joints. Uh, I think you have already got uh, an invitation. If not, you can, yeah. Uh, Take a look on our website and register where. Okay, I would like to show the website again. And maybe yeah, I can show you the webinar next week. Also under news and events, you find the webinar, yeah, stress analysis on surfaces and members. Okay, then under support and learning, you find the frequently asked questions. 
you need some help, you can enter a keyboard here. Yeah, for example, a template, it's often asked. Uh, yeah, for example, how can I save my preferred settings as a template and the display properties? Yeah, and you find the answer here or with images, you click on more and so on. You can also use our chat, you know, uh, right uh, at the bottom or you can write us an email and so on. Yeah, and you can find our free full trial version here at the top of the page. RFM6 and RSTAB9, our section, our Win2, and so on. RFM6 and RSTAB9 contain all add ons. Yeah, you can use full versions for 90 days. You can download um, today used. Uh, today, as uh, the used models in today's webinar and the script and so on, and try all by yourself. Okay, that should be all from my side. Maybe one, uh, yeah, an additional hint when you leave the webinar, where's a small survey? It takes maybe one minute would be very nice if you answer the questions. It's quite important for our quality management. Just note that the worst score is one and the best score is five. Yeah, that's all. I have to say thank you for your uh, yeah, attention. Thanks to my colleagues for answering the questions. I wish all a nice rest of the day and maybe we meet each other in a future webinar. Bye-bye.